So this is my fourth attempt. Yep, you heard right. My fourth attempt at filming this video. First time, it was completely out of focus. Didn't realize until I got it into the edit. Second time, the sound dropped out halfway through the video. And then the third time, no sound recorded. So fingers crossed, fourth time lucky. Let's do this. Okay, let's just get this video done. Hello everyone! Welcome to my personal care favourites video. Now, I just want to say that some of these, in fact probably most of them, will be suitable for a zero waste lifestyle. But some of these are probably more just eco-friendly, non-toxic alternatives to other stuff. So, they're not completely zero waste, but a lot of them you could bring into a zero waste lifestyle. I'm just using what works best for me at the moment. These won't necessarily be perfect for everyone. Everybody's body is like so unique and different and that's beautiful. So you have to kind of work out what works for you. So without further ado, we're going to jump right into this video for the fourth time. Yeah. It's time to razor the roof. Whoop whoop. This everyone is my razor. Um, you might recognize it from my zero waste alternatives video which you should totally watch by the way. Um, this is actually a slightly different razor to the one in that video. That one was by Edwin Jagger. It was really great and I loved using it. So this one is by Merca um, and they're really similar actually and they're both really good so I'd highly recommend both of them. So the only difference between the two of them is that the previous razor you would twist the top to take the razor out but for this one you twist the base and it raises up a like a so and you just take it out like that and then Take the blade off. And then to put the razor back on, just slide it on. Push it in there, and then I always turn it the wrong way. There we go. Twist that at the base, and it is secure. I guess I've been using this style of razor blade for like two and a half years or something, um, and I wouldn't go back. So I use it on my legs, my underarms, pretty much anywhere that needs a little bit of defuzzing. When using this, you only need to apply like a light gentle pressure you kind of let the razor do the work i think a razor like this usually costs around sort of 30 pounds thereabouts and then the razor blades are actually where you save a ton of money you could normally get a packet of flag blade oh, can you tell i've done this like four times already you can normally get a packet of five blades for this type of razor from your local pharmacy for around a pound so that's five blades for a pound, which is pretty good. Uh, but the only thing is, is that they normally come in a little bit of plastic, which isn't a huge amount compared to what you would probably have in a regular razor. Um, but it still comes in a little plastic box, which I wanted to try and avoid. I'm not completely plastic free, like I'm not perfect, um, as you'll see later in this video. But we did manage to find a plastic free alternative uh, for the razor blades. This is a sort of pack of 20 cartons. Each carton contains five blades and it's like a little dispenser. This cost around 10 pounds, so that works out at something like 10 pence a blade, I think, if I've done the maths right on that one. And then inside each carton are five of those, so five blades. And they each just come wrapped in a little bit of paper. I'm really gonna try not to cut myself like that and we probably go through like maybe one of these a month when i'm done with these i just put them in a little glass jar underneath our what's it called bathroom sink and then when i've collected enough i'm going to take i feel like my hair's doing something really weird so i'm going to take them down to my local um sort of recycling depot it's the sort of place where you can recycle items that are recyclable but that aren't collected by your what's it called recycling curbside thingy guys you know? But I haven't collected enough to make it worth the trip yet, but that's what I'm gonna do. Big plans. Up next is my toothbrush. Uh, this is by the Environmental Toothbrush, that's the name of the brand. It's a bamboo toothbrush, but it does have plastic. Ooh, there's a little bit still left on there from breakfast. Lovely. <laughs> Camera ready. It does still have plastic bristles, but it's obviously got a lot less plastic in it than a regular toothbrush does. I get this one because, honestly, a local shop sells it and it's really easy for me to pick it up. And also it comes in a cardboard box and that's it. So the packaging is really good too. My favorite wooden toothbrush was by a brand called Brush With Bamboo. And I was super lucky that Lauren Singer from Trashes for Tossers gave one to me when I met up with her for brunch about a year and a half ago in New York, um, which was super kind of her. And I absolutely loved it. 
sadly, they're not available here in the UK at the moment, but fingers crossed they might come here soon one day. I'm really hoping they will, because it was a really nice toothbrush to use. And I think they've developed one with a more eco-friendly bristle option. So, um, brush with bamboo, please come to the UK. I did try um, one with natural bristles made from pig hair. So it's a wooden toothbrush, I can't remember what the wood is, with a pig hair bristle. And I had really high hopes for this because it is completely natural and obviously completely biodegradable. But sadly, it just felt really weird, like kind of mushy and soggy. It's like the bristles didn't really hold up to the moisture. So this might be um, totally cool for some people, but it just didn't dig it, I'm afraid. Also, if you're vegan, then that's definitely not an option for you. And it's probably better to stick with the environmental toothbrush or brush with bamboo if you can get it. I'm so jealous of you. Can. This is super cute. So this is our dental floss. Finding a zero waste alternative for dental floss took a little bit of research um, because often you can get a natural floss but it normally comes in like a plastic, um, what's it called, box, container. Uh, so I managed to find this one which is a little glass vessel with a stainless steel uh, lid and it has the little sort of tooth on the top there and the floss is natural silk. So you can just unscrew it and you can actually buy just the refills. Now I got this from a Spanish company, I think, judging by their name, called Sin Plastico, which translates as without plastic. Um, they're a little bit like Life Without Plastic, which is an American uh, retailer, and they pretty much sell everything without plastic. Go figure. So Sin Plastico, very similar, and um, they've got some great options on there if you're looking for a plastic-free alternative to everyday items. So it's definitely worth checking them out. The shipping is a little bit on the pricey side, so I just try and buy everything that I need in one go. But personally, I'd rather put my money towards a company that are making a real effort to find alternatives without plastic. And I bought the refill from there too. Let me show you those. Gosh, it's now really sunny outside. Summer in the UK. You're never sure what's going to happen next. Hailstones? Probably. Okay, so this is the refill. They just come in like a little thing like that. I'm pretty sure they came in this bag. I can't remember, but that's how I'm storing them. So I just buy probably like 10 of these in one go and they've lasted ages. I mean, ages. And we're regular flossers in the Arnell household toothpaste. So this is my zero waste toothpaste. It's a mixture of coconut oil and bicarbonate of soda um, or baking soda as you call it in America. Um, us Brits like to keep it sounding sensible so we've stuck with bicarbonate of soda. It's kind of a 50-50 mix. In all honesty I'm a little bit lazy when I make it so I just probably fill it half with bicarbonate of soda and then just mix in some coconut oil maybe like a heaped teaspoon um, until it forms a sort of paste texture. I personally don't add peppermint oil although I know this is something that some people do and that's cool with them um, but I've read that it can irritate your gums and to be honest I'm not a huge fan of the minty taste of toothpaste. It kind of makes food taste weird afterwards so I actually just really like the uh, taste of coconut oil and the saltiness of bicarbonate of soda. So that's what works for me. I um, had my dentist appointment about a month and a half ago and all was well. <sighs> Must be the baking soda. Wow. So speaking of bicarbonate of soda, this is the bicarbonate of soda that I use. It's by Cabbages and Roses. And as well as using it to make toothpaste, I also use it as deodorant. Um, I know that there are recipes to make homemade deodorant out there, but in all honesty, I am really lazy. So I found that I just pat it on after a shower, maybe 10 or 15 minutes after I've had a shower on my underarms, and it keeps me fresh for the day. So when I started out trying to find a more natural alternative for deodorant, I started off using one of the alum blocks and that just really didn't work for me. It kind of actually created like a BO scent, which I wasn't really down with. Um, and then I started using bicarbonate of soda. But I tried so many different brands and some of them actually made my underarms sting a little bit and other ones just didn't work as well. So this one I think is a really fine grain and it just seems to work really well. It doesn't irritate my underarms. I just sort of pat it on like a light powder and it does keep me fresh all day, like full 24 hours. I also love that this one comes in a paper bag and it's produced and packed in England. It's really cute on the packaging. They've actually listed a whole bunch of stuff that you can use this for. Most like cleaning around the house which is something else that baking soda or bicarbonate soda is really useful for. Um, you can do a ton of stuff with it. You can use it
it to keep cabbage green, apparently. Ooh, didn't know that. You're cooking, add a pinch of bicarbonate soda to water to retain the magnesium in the leaves. <gasps> so it's a really useful product to have around the house. Also, when I switched to using something a lot more natural as a deodorant, there was a kind of transition phase of sweating like a beast because my body, I think, was just adjusting and getting used to it and kind of overcompensating. And um, that sort of settled down after around two to three months and now I hardly perspire at all. Maybe just a little bit on a very, very, very hot day or when I've exerted myself a lot, go me. Um, like that happens much. An alternative to deodorant is making your own. I think uh, Lauren Singh has got a really good deodorant recipe on her channel, Trash is for Tossers, so go check that out. Um, if you can't be bothered to make your own and you don't want to just pat on bicarbonate of soda, then there are brands out there like The Natural Deodorant Company, and they have made a clean deodorant balm, and I bought this to try out. It's definitely got a really lovely kind of Oh, fresh, clean, almost summer-like scent. This one is the lemon and geranium. Um, and the ingredients are really good. What have we got here? Bicarbonate soda, coconut oil, shea butter, uh, arrowroot flour, olive oil, lemon essential oil, and geranium essential oil. And it comes in a glass jar with a metal lid. Or you could try making your own. Sticking with deodorants. Uh, finally, my husband really likes using this one. It's a bar that we buy from Lush. And now I know not all Lush products are completely natural and amazing, but this one is. It just smells so good. So this we buy without packaging. I normally just stop them at the counter and say, can I have no packaging, no paper, just put it straight in my cloth bag, and they're cool with that. I can't remember what it's called, but I'll put a link in the description box below. This one you just have to wet it a little bit and then rub it on your underarms, like a so, um, and it lasts for ages. Coconut oil! So I did mention this in my non-toxic makeup video, like how I love to use this as a makeup remover. It just works really well, but I also like to use it as a body moisturizer as well, or a facial moisturizer. It's just a really handy and useful product to have around, um, and it does work really well. So it's great for making toothpaste and as a general moisturizer. That is the coconut oil section of the video. Soap! I use a block, ooh, it's got a hair on it. I'm really sorry about that. Let's just take that off. This is the Dr. Bronner's All One Castile Soap in lavender, so good. Um, so I use this as a body wash. I know some people like to use it to br brush, wash their hair as well. Um, but I can't do that anymore because I've had my hair like super lightened, which means it needs something extra nourishing and moisturizing. So I'll show you my shampoo in a minute. It does come in paper packaging, um, but I like that I can read that the ingredients are really good in it. So when I'm looking for soap, I just try and find one that's got the most natural, non-toxic ingredients in it. So yes, soap. Shampoo. Now, Previously, I mentioned that I did wash my hair with the Dr. Bronner's Liquid Castile Soap. That was before I lightened it to this level of brightness. So now I need something that's super moisturizing. So I found this one by Rawa. They are a really great non-toxic brand. They do come in plastic. But if you know of any uh, that do come in a glass bottle that are non-toxic and are super moisturizing, then please let me know in the comments. I'd love love to find out about that. So for the moment I'm using Rawa shampoo. I have to say actually since cutting my hair short I don't need any conditioner. So I actually get my hair done at an organic salon in Hackney uh, called Glass House Salon. They're really cool. Also I've realized since cutting my hair this short I don't need to wash it that often. So I probably wash it like once every five days. So I'm definitely using a lot less shampoo than I used to. It's made with organic and 100% natural ingredients. Uh, and this one's ideal for color treated hair because guys, this ain't natural. It says free of synthetics, parabens and sulfates, 100% natural, 100% vegan, made with certified organic ingredients. Before I went this light, I did try the uh, bicarbonate of soda on my hair thing and then the apple cider vinegar rinse, it's a thing. It really didn't suit my hair. It kind of went really straw like kind of really damaged, it just didn't work for me. So I think when sort of taking on a zero waste lifestyle, you don't have to be 100% perfect. It's about finding what works for you and finding something that's better than what you were using before. So for me at the moment, this is what I'm using. So yeah, it does come in a plastic bottle. I'm sorry, I'm a horrible person, but I will recycle it. Um, and I'm using a lot less of it. So hopefully I don't need to buy as much shampoo as I used to. Hooray! On the topic of hair, like I said, I wash it probably once every five days, but if I'm feeling super lazy, there are a whole bunch of school kids out there, 
being really loud, so I'm just going to talk over them. Uh, if I'm feeling super lazy, then I'll use some arrowroot powder in this shaker, and it kind of acts like a dry shampoo, and I just sort of sprinkle it out and then brush it through my hair. It's, it's actually just gone everywhere. Oh dear, on the trousers. Ah. Um, so yeah, I keep it in the shaker. To be honest, I don't use it that often. Sunscreen! Whoop whoop! I uh, really don't need it today because the sun has completely disappeared and it's absolutely bucketing it down. But for the times that it is super sunny, uh, or if I'm on holiday, I will mostly try and just get like 10 to 15 minutes of sunshine on my skin. But I know everybody's skin type is completely different, so you have to do what works for you. Um, and if it is like a scorching hot day, like is it ever here? But if it is, then I will use some sunscreen. And this is what I found when we were on our honeymoon last year. It's a brand called Badger, and they've got really great non-toxic organic ingredients. Now, as I mentioned, I don't know why I feel like I need to hold them right here, but I do. I might just hold one of them. Let's hold this one, or this one. I'll hold this one. So as I mentioned in my non-toxic makeup alternatives video, have I talked about that enough in this one? You should just really, just go watch it after this, after this. So in that video, I mentioned that I tried to find makeup that doesn't have titanium dioxide in it because I've read that it's not great for you. So titanium dioxide is natural and you will still find it in a lot of eco-friendly, natural, non-toxic alternatives, but it is something that I'm a little bit funny about Basically, if it's in powder form, it's best avoided, especially if it is coated and nano-sized particles. But if the product that you're buying has got titanium dioxide in it and it says that it's uncoated, non-nanoparticles, and especially if it's in a sort of lotion or liquid form, then you're probably gonna be fine. It is something that you will find in a lot of sunscreen because it does actually act as the sunscreen itself and it kind of helps the lotion sink into your skin a bit. But I managed to find this brand uh, that has just zinc oxide in it. And zinc oxide acts as more of a barrier, so it doesn't really sink into your skin. And again, it says non-nano uncoated zinc oxide as the sunscreen in this one and this one. Because it doesn't really sink into the skin, it does kind of create a slight white film on top, which I genuinely didn't mind. Although there were times where I thought it would be nice to try the tinted one. So I did buy the tinted zinc oxide sunscreen cream from Badger as well. Um, and this one, again, it doesn't really rub in, but because it's tinted, it looks like it's sort of rubbed in a little more. And it's with sunflower seed oil, beeswax, I think it says jojoba seed oil, it's kind of scratched off a bit there, and sunflower vitamin E. And then it's got non-nano uncoated zinc oxide, 22.5% as the sunscreen. I just wanted to give a little shout out to this brand called Inlight. Um, this is their organic face cleanser and their line softener, uh, which is kind of like a daily moisturizer. And these guys are based in Cornwall and they make the most amazing products. Oh, it smells so good. It's like Christmas in a jar, it's so good. Whilst I have been using coconut oil as a moisturizer, I then found these guys. And to be honest, I'm a really lazy person when it comes to having a skincare routine. Like I've just never really been into it. But then I found these guys and they've completely revolutionized my skincare routine. Like I, as in, I now have a skincare routine. Both certified organic by the Soil Association. They come in glass jars with metal lids and the quality of their ingredients is just amazing. Um, so I actually went down to visit their little facility, factory, head office, whatever you want to call it. Um, and firstly, they are a lovely, lovely bunch of people. And secondly, it's really interesting to see how how they kind of infuse all of the oils with these different kind of herbs and things. It's amazing. Not only do they smell amazing, but I genuinely feel that they make my skin look really good as well. Finally, I just want to give a shout out because it is a personal care video to the old menstrual cup back by popular demand. Uh, I did do a, an entire video on how much I love my moon cup, which is the brand that I use. Uh, so go check that out. But I just want to give it a little shout out because it is life changing and it's a really great eco friendly zero waste alternative to that time of the month. So there you go, guys. That is the personal care eco alternative slash some zero waste options video. I'm gonna come up with a better title, I think, for that. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please hit the like button and subscribe. Go on, you know you wanna just click, 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 click. I've also decided to start doing something with my Kate Arnell channel. It's kind of been sitting there 
for ages. I used to put little Made in Chelsea roundups on it. I used to put a few of my TV show reels on it. Um, and that was kind of it. So I've decided I might start doing some like vlogging and basically just having fun with it. So watch this space on the Kate Onell channel. I'll put a link to it in the description box below as well. So yes, yeah, stay fresh and I'll see you soon.